A defining feature of social science is the production of knowledge. Empirical generalizations that can be made about the social world that help us understand relationships between social phenomena, why people behave and act the ways that they do. The ways at which scientists arrive at knowledge is referred to the as the scientific process. And in this lecture, we're going to kind of describe two ways, um, different ways that you can approach a scientific process, induct, which reflect inductive and deductive reasoning. And we'll describe what each of these types of reasoning refers to. Before we jump into defining what inductive and deductive reasoning are, I wanted to introduce you to the scientific process. Now, this is also sometimes referred to as the research circle. Um, but the scientific process refers to a, a cyclical process that involves the continuous interplay between theory and research. And there are four components of the scientific process. Theory, hypothesis, data, and empirical generalization. Theory refers to the set of interconnected propositions that help to explain a, a given empirical regularity and contribute to its understanding. This is a, a set of ideas about the social world, and what is um, a defining feature of a, uh, a, a great social theory is its ability to provide a, a, a call, an understanding of the causal process that links different social phenomena. When you have theory, you're able to develop hypotheses, and a hypothesis is an expected but unconfirmed relationship between two or more variables. A hypothesis is formed perhaps based on a, a, th a theory that exists, and it allows you to maybe propose a, a testable um, prediction about the relationship between two or more variables. Data represents an additional component of the scientific process, and data refers to empirical observations that you gathered from the social world. These could be empirical observations that are made from available data sources, such as social media platforms like Twitter or Facebook, but data can also be captured through data that you, the researcher, collect through responses to survey questionnaires or from information that's gleaned through qualitative interviews or participant observation. From these data and analysis of empirical observations or data, you can generate empirical generalizations. Empirical generalizations are the voices of these data in terms of the recurring patterns or themes, um, the relationships that are demonstrated by um, statistical relationships between variables or patterns and themes in the qualitative data. And empirical generalizations are the generalizations that are made from empirical observations. So there are, there are findings which emerge from the data that you collected that allow you to either develop or contribute back to a, an, um, a theory or develop a new social theory. And so the scientific process refers to the interplay between theory, hypothesis, data, and empirical generalization. There are, there are two types of reasoning which I'll talk about today, and they refer to kind of where you start along the scientific process. Um, deductive reasoning is a, a reasoning process that moves from general principles to specific instances. Some people call this, um, some people refer to deductive reasoning as the general to the, as moving from the general to the specific. Scientists reason deductively when they test how a hypothesis explains or predicts empirical generalizations based on data. It, it's also referred to as a, a top-down process. So deduction would be a process in which a researcher reviews the set of ideas that are proposed by a theory and develops a uh, testable prediction um, based on the ideas from those theories that they can uh, test using data. Um, so in, in, a, in, the de in a deductive reasoning process, the, the researcher um, familiarizes themselves with the theory and they they, based on the, the ideas from that theory, they can form a hypothesis, which then they test with data from which they make empirical generalizations. This 
the deductive reasoning process is referred to as a, um, a top-down process because you're moving from a, a general principles of a theory um, down to the specific instances that are captured and represented by the data that you collect. In contrast, inductive reasoning refers to a reasoning process that moves from specific instances to general principles. So in inductive reasoning, you're moving from the specific to the general. And this is uh, also referred to as kind of a, a bottom-up process. Scientists reason inductively when they, infer, when they infer empirical generalizations from their data. So in an induction, in, in, with induction or inductive reasoning, the researcher um, begins at a different place in the scientific process. They begin with the data. They begin with, they begin by collecting empirical observations. And as they go through the process of collecting these empirical observations, they can make generalizations about the data. And those empirical generalizations are used to produce theory. Um, so rather than starting with the theory, with inductive reasoning, you're really beginning by collecting observations, data from the social world, which are used to make empirical observations and then contribute to a theory. So this is referred to as the inductive um, reasoning process um, related to the scientific process. I wanted to provide a, another way of kind of thinking about inductive and deductive reasoning. Um, I also kind of refer to them as inductive research versus deductive research. So inductive research begins with the research question and the collection of empirical data. And based on the generalizations that are made from those empirical data, the patterns that emerge from the data, you can begin to make um, tentative hypotheses which you reconfirm with additional analysis of the data and eventually produce a, a set of inter, uh, interrelated and uh, connected ideas that allow you to advance your causal, um, a causal understanding of a social process, and basically contribute to a theory. So inductive research allows you to sort of contribute or develop a theory um, by starting with empirical observations. Um, from which you generally you make generalizations that allow you to develop an understanding of the social world. Deductive research is different from inductive research. In deductive research, you're really beginning with a theory, a set of ideas about the social world that exists, that existed before you started doing your research. Um, and based on this existing theory, you develop a set of hypotheses which you um, test using empirical observations. You collect data which allow you to test these hypotheses and you either confirm or refute the hypothesis that you develop um, based on that theory. Uh, so in deductive research it begins with a theory-driven hypothesis which guides the data collection that you do and um, gu guides the way that you frame your analysis and you either confirm or refute uh, the, the hypothesis that you've developed, um, and that either um, pro, um, further support provide provides further support for the theory, um, or might um, pr propose new a new set of hypotheses, a new um, a angle of the theory. I wanted to provide um, you two examples of inductive and deductive reasoning. And the first example has to do with deductive reasoning. And this study was conducted by Holly Foster and colleagues, and it was published in the Journal of Health and Social Behavior about 10 years ago. And the title of the article is Growing Up Fast, Stress Exposure and Subjective Weathering in Emerging Adulthood. In this study, uh, Foster and colleagues used um, a theoretical perspective called the stress process model. The stress process model specifies how stress is related to health. Um, basically, it proposes relationships between stress exposure and health outcomes and looks at how personal and social resources moderate the relationships between stress and health. So based on this uh, stress process theoretical model, Foster and colleagues hypothesized that 
traumatic experiences in childhood, including abuse and neglect, in combination with premature role transitions, contribute to um, subjective weathering among older adults. Subjective weathering um, meaning uh, feeling older than your actual age, as well as psychological distress as measured through depression. And they basically, this, this, so the stress process theater, theoretical model informed the types of questions that they asked and the hypotheses that they predicted. Um, and the, the research allowed them to um, provide further support for the stress process model and maybe advance the model by looking at new sets of relationships that prior research had not examined before. So this was kind of a, a good example of a deductive reasoning process because the researchers started um, by reviewing the ideas of a, a theoretical model from which they developed hypotheses and tested those hypotheses with available data. Um, which provided additional support and new information about this theoretical model. In contrast, inductive reasoning um, was used in a, a study conducted by the sociologists uh, David Snow and Dana Moss, and they used a, um, a qualitative research approach called grounded theory. And what makes um, what and they they used this um, theoretical approach to study. Um, uh, collective action as evidenced by protest events. And what makes uh, this particular study inductive is that rather than starting with a particular theoretical approach, they, they immerse themselves in historical and ethnographic data um, through participant observations um, at protest events uh, related to the Syrian war and the Occupy movement. In, and they went to protest, they collected ethnographic data from protest movements in Los Angeles. And based on these historical and ethnographic data that the researchers collected, they were able to develop empirical generalizations that illustrated how spontaneous and creative actions act to shape the character of non-hierarchical protest events. Um, so basically, they developed these empirical observations based on the data that they collected. So they, they began by immersing themselves within these, um, within a fieldwork context, which allowed them to gather data, which produced um, a set of empirical uh, generalizations, which kind of contribute to social theory. So they started with the data, they developed empirical generalizations, which kind of informed social theory. Um, so it's inductive because they were, they, they began this pro it was a bottom up process through which they immersed themselves within this field of ethnographic data and um, developed empirical observations.